Do you feel frustrated, unprepared, confused, or lost? Well, it's time to be happy because Geography World Channel is here to help. I see the comments and requests and I will act on them. Please remember to follow Geography World channel on Instagram and Facebook using the link shown on the screen. Please remember to like, share with your friends and subscribe. For person wishing to contact me privately, you may email me at geographyworld100 at gmail.com. The link will be posted below. Welcome back to Geography World Channel, where for this video we'll be looking at the May-June 2017 Cape Geographic Paper 2. For this video we'll be looking at question 4, which looks at module 3. Now we're shown a picture that shows the damages to a building after an earthquake. So we're to answer the questions that follow. So let's look at the first question. So the first question asks that we state two primary impacts of the earthquake evident in figure 2. Go back to the picture. Now remember the primary effects are those caused directly by the event. So looking at the picture based on the earthquake that happened, we can see collapse of buildings, we can see a destruction of the road, we can see tilted utility poles and we can see damages to utility wires so the wires are here right we can see the tilted poles in the background we can see distortion to the road you can see that the road is damaged and we can see the collapse of buildings so you can list any two and you're okay Part 2 asks us to state two secondary impacts which could result from the damage depicted in the picture. Now remember the secondary effects now are those in the aftermath of the event. So because of the primary impacts or effects in the picture, we can have homelessness or so um, places, persons may become homeless because their homes were broken down. We can have an outspread of diseases we can have lack of potable water we can have famine in the region we can have fire right an electric wire it could cause fire and we can have disruption of waste and sewer systems so there's a lot of secondary effects that can result as of the earthquake that was ha that happened in the picture here so let's move on to part b now, part B asks us to explain how fold mountains are formed and we're to include a well-labeled diagram in our response. So, fold mountains, they're created where we have two or more plates or, or tectonic plates coming towards each other. So, in the first picture, you see the two plates coming towards each other. So, this is a convergent plate boundary. Now, when the plates come towards each other, they will collide. Now, when they collide right here, they will start to compress. So, the two clay boundaries, once they meet, they will start to compress. So, the rocks and the debris are wrapped and fall into rocky outcrops, hill mountains, right? So, they'll start to fold, and because of the compression, they'll start to fold upwards and downwards into anticline and synclines. Good. So the two plates they are pushing against each other causing the rocks and the debris and any material between here to fold once they fold they fall to form fold mountains or fold mountain ranges good so let's go one over that one more time so you have two or more earth tectonic plates pushing together once they collide they start to compress so the rocks and the debris will become fold into rocky outcrops, hills or mountain or entire mountain ranges. So once you have the diagram and you explain perfectly 
you should receive six marks. And then part two asks that you outline three economic benefits of fold mountains. Now, fold mountains are, even though some persons see them as just mountains, they have economic benefits, right? So, for example, in the Alps, they have farming. So, a lot of persons practice farming in the, along the Alps, along the slope of the Alps. Um, along the Alps as well, they have hydroelectric power, right? So, hydroelectric power is used in the Alps. And Fall Mountain, believe it or not, is a very good tourist attraction. So, persons actually go to the range, the, the Fall Mountain ranges, so actually climb to the peak and just to look over, just to get a good look at the scenery that's there so three economic benefits they have farming they have hydroelectric power and they have tourism all right let's just see part c the impact of flooding may be prevented and or reduced by collective community measures here to evaluate the statements using measures that communities can take to prevent or prepare for flooding and to provide two reasons why individuals may not respond to flooding so this is a structured essay that you should write so the first thing that it asks is do you think that the impact of flooding may be prevented and or reduced by collective community measures for me yes right once the communities prepared for a disaster it will definitely reduce the impact that the disaster or natural hazard will have on that community if you should look oftentimes when a community is affected it means that they were not properly prepared for that natural hazard now where you have evaluate the statement the first thing that you're going to explain is that you're going to tell us two measures that community can take to prepare for flooding. Now, some of the measures that the community can do to pre um, basically prepare for flooding is that they can educate the members about flooding. You cannot expect that persons are going to know what flooding is and what should be done during a flooding if you don't educate them about it. Good. So the first thing is that you have to educate them about it. Tell them what to do before the flooding, what to do during and what to do after the flooding. So education is the number one. Number two, the community members will come together and clean the drains, right? So some of the drains may be clogged or covered with vegetation. They can come together and clean the drains so that when it starts to rain, the drains are clear so the water moves quicker away from the community thus preventing flooding or it takes a longer while for flooding to actually take place then the next thing they need to do is as well as set up evacuation teams so set up teams to help each other just in case the area becomes flooded so let's say if house a and b if a if house a and b becomes flooded then person from house C, you are responsible to get them to your home. So you set up an evacuation team and just ensure that if in case of a flood, there are responsible enough persons there to help or assist others. Now, if it's a coastal community, then the community would want to build seawalls to basically help them or protect them from flooding in the coastal area so if it's a coastal community they can also build sea walls for protection there are many other measures that the community can actually take to prepare for the flooding so these are only a few if you have any more you can add them once you're able to expound on them so the next part of the question that you're going to provide two reasons why individuals may not respond to flood warnings no in the caribbean we know that we get warnings and some persons they don't respond to them any at all now some other reasons why persons do not respond to flood warnings one maybe the method used may not reach everyone not everybody in the caribbean will maybe have a radio or a tv or have access to any of those even the newspaper so not everybody will know that 
Jericho Gully is about to flood, they need to um, evacuate the area. So the method used may be a challenge, right? Now, the education level of some respondents or some residents may also be a challenge. So a resident who is well knowledgeable about the effect of a flood will know that, oh, suddenly the only thing who said there's going to be a flood, so I need to go. While somebody who has never heard about a flood before heard that the community is about to be flooded, they're like, but that don't sound bad. And they'll sit at home until they're covered on the water. Right? So the education level um, basically speaks to the reason why persons don't respond to it. And some persons believe that their property is safer due to the measures that they have implemented. So Mr. Brown went ahead and he built a tall wall around his property, right? And then he implemented a whole lot of other uh, measures along his property. So he believed that his home is a safe haven. His home cannot be flooded. So Mr. Brown decided that he's not going anywhere because his home was well, well put together and prepared for flooding events so he cannot be flooded out unfortunately sometimes mr brown did not see the one little fault in what he was doing so because he believed his property was safe he did not respond to the warning now a lot of persons they do not want to leave their valuable possession behind now a lot of persons opt not to go to um like the shelters because they don't want to leave behind their cars or their home full with their jewelries or money or they don't want to leave their valuable possession behind so that's another reason why persons don't respond to flood warnings or you can expound on the answers or the options given and use examples and one that is well written you should be rewarded 14 marks and the 14 marks will come now to help you to get the 30. The 30 mark plus the grade one. So you just have to expound on the pointers. You can't just the list, you have to expound on the pointers. We are at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and please remember to like, share, subscribe and turn on your post notification bell in order to receive more videos like these. Leave comments below suggesting topics that you would want me to present on. In the comment section below, comment the name of your school and the territory for a shout out in my next video. Until then, bye!